uh, adjusting. OK, yeah, got it, yeah. So, so it's a great pleasure to have uh, uh, Jia Xingyin uh, from uh, Princeton University today to give us an update on, on his uh, recent progress on the, uh, the new Kagumi lattice superconductor. Actually, it was first discovered by Steve Wilson's group at UC Santa Barbara. So Jia Xing is an expert on STM. He obtained his PhD degree uh, in 2016 from uh, Su Hengpan and Hong Ding from uh, Institute of Physics. A Chinese Academy of Sciences. And he has been uh, since uh, staying at the Zaki Hassan School at Princeton. So today he's going to uh, tell us about the uh, quantum trilogy in charge order Kagumi superconductors. Okay, the floor is yours, Jason. Thank you. So, um, also Tomo, Tomo is also here. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, yeah, yeah. well, I'm a USR expert. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, the outline, uh, I want to uh, divide this talk into three parts. Uh, because I do not have uh, enough data to fill the whole talk with the uh, Kagomi superconductor. So, so I will uh, first like to uh, mention some of our earlier studies in Kagomi magnet and uh, how we shift our uh, research to Kagomi superconductors. And then I will um, mainly talk about the charge order uh, with el electronic and magnetic duality uh, observed in uh, Wilson's sample. And lastly, I will uh, mention uh, some kind of uh, indication and uh, probably more of the perspectives on the intertwined Kagomi superconductivity. So Kagomi lattice has been introduced to quantum physics for 70 years. Uh, initially, this, uh, um, the first Kagomi lattice uh, physics paper is written by a Japanese uh, physicist, uh, Itoro uh, Siyuzi. So in Japanese word, um, kagomi means uh, bamboo basket woven pattern, uh, look like this. And uh, actually, uh, actually if, um, the kagomi lattice, to my understanding, is a, hu is a pure human creation because we don't really find a natural analog uh, in nature. Like the honeycomb lattice we have well defined by its name, it's, uh, um, is exist readily in nature, but uh, uh, the Kagomi lattice is really a human creation, and this has this Kagomi-like pattern has been known for like uh, over thousands of years, and uh, uh, we have seen this kind of pattern in the Star of David and uh, hexagram in alchemy. So uh, in physics, Kagomi lattice uh, the major feature is uh, uh, frustration. So that we open call it a frustrated lattice. So the frustration comes from two parts. One is the, the spin frustration. Uh, for example, in the triangle uh, pattern, in the triangle uh, part of the Kagumi lattice, if we consider the antiferromagnetic uh, spin exchange interaction, then we have, if we was, and we have assigned these two spins with opposite direction, then the third direct, the third spin will be uh, wondering which direction uh, he or she should uh, align to. So that uh, gives the system a lot of degeneracies. And this kind of spin degeneracy uh, give this spin Kagomi materials, which are usually insulators, are good candidates for the realization of spin liquid phase. On the electronic structure, there can also be a frustration for the charge. Particularly, the Kagomi lattice have, uh, usually can be viewed as a three sub lattice as the A, B, C noted here. So the electron wave function from these three sub lattice can interfere with each other. And they, they sometimes can have um, destructive interference that completely localize the charge in the Kagumi lattice. And from the momentum space, this will naturally form a, a flat band in the Kagumi uh, tight banding model when we're just considering the nearest neighbor hoping. In the meantime, uh, Kagumi lattice also have uh, another two peculiar features. One is the uh, uh, Dirac fermion and the Brennan zone corners. And, uh, the Van Hoff singularity and the Brennan zone uh, boundary. 
So the flat band of the tachymulatics gives the system stronger correl correlations. And the direct fermion can give the system topological features. Uh, therefore, the Kakumilat is actually an um, exciting system to have uh, geometry, correlation, and topology. And the interplay between these three ingredients can give us a lot of uh, fascinating physics. And uh, here, uh, what we use is, um, uh, is a microscopic uh, spectroscopy technique called scanning tunneling microscopy. This technique essentially utilize uh, atomically sharp tip to probe the local density states for quantum material. Uh, this density state is re you revealed by our uh, turning di over dv spectra. Here we, I use um, uh, cobaltine. This is a newly discovered Kagomi quantum material as a elaboration how this technique works. So we use uh, atomic sharp tip to probe the surface profile, which reveals two kinds of territories. If we zoom into the upper territories, we find a, a perfect, uh, perfect thin honeycomb lattice of this material. And if we zoom into the lower territories, we can observe a, a Cobo-3 thin one a Kabumi uh, lattice. So this lattice, geom lattice uh, Geometry resolving capability is very unique for our techniques so that we can further probe their respective electronic structures. Then simultaneously with obtaining this topographic image, we can uh, perform DIDB spectroscopy at each of the spatial points. And then we can uh, obtain, for example, one energy slice of this DIDB mapping, which shows clearly this two uh, different uh, surface territories has dramatically different electronic structures. Especially for the Kagomi lattice, we observe some tiny ring-like signals around the defects. So these are defects induced standing waves. Through performing a Fourier transform for these uh, images, then we can directly obtain their uh, quasi-particle interference pattern in the scattering space or equivalent to the uh, momentum space. So the DIDV spectroscopy, uh, topographic image and DIDV imaging together constitute the major data structure for our technique. And over recent years, we have used this technique to study a variety of different uh, topological Kagomi magnets. Uh, this includes um, many types, for example, uh, antiferromagnetic, uh, a magnetic material and uh, some ferromagnetic Kagomi materials. For this material, we either study the direct cone physics or study the uh, flat band physics for the electronic structure. However, one overlooked uh, feature uh, is actually the, the Van Hoff singularity feature, which turned out to be very essential for the uh, later on discovered Kagomi superconductors. I will give one example how we uh, study this Kagomi magnet. So one uh, pursuit, major pursuit in study this topological Kagomi magnet is to looking for the uh, Haldane phase or the Chen quantum phase. So as said, the Kagomi lattice can naturally has uh, this direct cones in the electronic structure and the Brillouin zone boundaries. And if we further consider a magnetic induction to split the spin up and spin down bands and further adding the king Mali type of spin orbital coupling, then at this K or K prime point, there will open a chain energy gap. And spontaneously, the Kagomi lattice will feature a Carol H mode. This Carol H mode um, is also known as a quantum anonymous Hall state. And if we perform a simple um, tight bending calculation, uh, we can e e easily visualize this um, chain energy gap. And simultaneously, there is a Carroll edge mode uh, in the uh, edge projected calculation. And then spontaneously, there, if we call, calculate the whole uh, coefficient, there will be a quantized whole value. So uh, this is a 
uh, known as the chain, uh, chain number to equals to one uh, phase. But how do we realize such a exotic quantum phase? Then we uh, look at these uh, available Kagome magnets. Then we found one tiny problem in this material is that uh, there is often an additional tin atom within the Kagome lattice. We only have one special case is the terbium 166 material where we found the large chemical pressure of the rare earth can push the central tin atom out of the Kagome lattice. So this, um, this material class present a uh, possible family to realize the uh, pristine Kagome lattice to further uh, realize this exotic quantum phase. And further look at this um, rare earth based 166 material, uh, we look into the literature to find that only terbium is a special case that the Kagome lattice features a outplane magnetization. So that uh, satisfies the original theoretical criteria to have a outplane um, a magnetization and that to make the um, Kimberley spin orbital coupling term to be, uh, to be valid and essential. So this material through our magnetization measurement to have a, a very good magnetic loop if we apply the magnetic field along the uh, C axis. So that is a perfect hard magnet. And the STM uh, imaging of this material do reveals very clean Kagome lattice where for a large area, we do not find any atomic defect. So this encourages us to further apply a magnetic field to perturb the uh, Kagome lattice. Then we observe uh, only in the Kagome Magni lattice, we observe when we apply a night magnetic field, there are substantial density states modulations. So this is a clear indication of the uh, Landau quantization. So this allows us to further map out the uh, topological electronic band structure that we'll, I will uh, talk about later. And for another non kagome layer of termination, uh, this is the turbine uh, team termination. We don't find uh, a dramatic magnetic field response. So the topological feature is only resided in the Kagome lattice. And further, we systematically uh, increase step by step, increase the C axis magnetic field to uh, obtain the Landau fan structure in the density states. So the Landau fan uh, structure can be easily uh, fed by a spin polarized Dirac fermium with a chain energy gap. So uh, this formula uh, contains several parts. Uh, this is a uh, spin polarization part means all the bands uh, come from um, spin up or spin down bands that are polarized by the magnetic field. This is a simple Z-man shift term. And this is a direct dispersion term with a direct uh, velocity. So this is a trend energy gap term. So it seems uh, our uh, Landau fan data can be uh, well fitted by, by well described it by this uh, simple formula. So with this, this description, we can uh, directly obtain the chain energy gap size to be over uh, 30 millivolts. So this is a, a very large uh, chain energy gap that comparable to the room temperature. So we, with obtaining these parameters, we can inversely plot the direct dispersion and uh, compare with our uh, angle resolved photo emission results uh, for the occupied states. So there uh, can be a natural connection with our scanning kerning microscopic data. So as a, a chain energy gap, we also determine that the chain energy uh, gap, chain Dirac comb is located uh, around 130 millivolts above the Fermi level. Because as I said, there will be a spontaneous be a, a carrier age mode. So we systematically imaging a step atomic step age for different energies and only precisely within the uh, chain energy gap energy, we observe a substantial or strong uh, age mode. So this is uh, uh, consistent with the bulk boundary uh, topological connection for the chain quantum phase. And for 
Uh, even though this trend energy gap is located above the Fermi level, because the trend energy gap is so large, so uh, we Yeah, we, we lost you. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, yeah, so sorry. So now it seems to rise. So eventually we can evaluate in, intrinsic contribution uh, to the anomalous hole connectivity by experiment to be 0.14 quantum hole and the um, based on STM data is value, uh, evaluated as 0.13 on quantum pole. So there also seem to be a, a good consistency. So this eventually allows to build up a bulk boundary barrier connection to establish the chain quantum phase in this material. There are also other uh, interesting features. Um, we have observed long uh, transport quantum oscillations for this material and uh, to support that the material do has a um, quasi 2D uh, feature. And there are also consistent first principle calculation to support that the uh, chain energy gap do opens up by involving the uh, spin orbital coupling. Without spin orbital coupling, it will be gapless. And we, we also uh, previously studied uh, certain Tagoyan magnets to find uh, some correlation effect as a pneumaticity. When we found a, a exotic quantum state that when we apply infinite magnetic field, it has a um, two-fold energy uh, shift. This uh, consistent builds up consistency with our transport measurement when we rotate a magnetic field within the uh, plane and measure the C-axis resistivity, we also can obtain a two-fold uh, response. And one um, strange, uh, one strange Thing uh, in our research of these Kagome magnets that uh, there is a one special material cobalt tin. It because uh, other like ion tin, uh, its cousin material are all antiferromagnetic or ferromagnetic material. One uh, puzzle for us is why uh, the cobalt tin is a paramagnet. It don't have a, a strong magnetism. Then uh, we, when we perform uh, spectroscopy uh, for this material, we found uh, the band dispersion actually around the Fermi level is displays a double kink feature. So through the experience in the high DC studies, uh, this double kink feature usually is a clear hint for the coupling of the electronic band structure to a bosonic mode, usually leads to a, a superconductivity instability. Uh, and at that time, the referee even uh, asked us how, uh, whether we can evaluate the potential superconductivity TC based on our data. We, we do have a uh, um, estimation to, to find this value to be uh, 3.5 Kelvin. And uh, you know, we even collaborated with the Power Truth Group and the University of Houston uh, to find that the material, some of the material do have uh, certain superconductivity signals that they are called filamentary superconductivity. Then we want to uh, claim whether this works to uh, establish it as a Kagome superconductor. Uh, however, when we further look into the literature, we found actually these um, superconductors with Kagome lattice has been, uh, uh, has been reported for over 40 years. Yeah, there are many of uh, this material like, um, like uh, over 20 materials candidates. And we, we even studied one of them and uh, do not uh, find too much uh, exotic thing happening. Uh, but we do find this kind of material can have Kagome-like band structure. Uh, for example, for this material, it has a TC for uh, of seven Kelvin. And then we, we found uh, the band structure has a flat band and uh, even also have a one half singularity near the uh, amp near the for me energy at the end point. So, um, and this, so this um, discourages us to uh, claim that the cobalt tin is a perfect Kagome superconductor. 
and, and at the same time, uh, Stephen Wilson also reported his discovery of uh, another family of Kagome superconductors. So that what surprises us is that uh, this kind of uh, materials, including uh, three materials, potassium, vanadium, antimony, and uh, the other two, they all, uh, even though they have uh, much lower TC uh, on the order of one Kelvin, uh, there has been a much larger, temp much higher temperature anomaly uh, around 100 Kelvin. Uh, for this uh, potassium, it's around um, 80 Kelvin. This anomaly initially is not well understood, and it's claimed to be a um, uh, uh, claim to be a orbital, a certain orbital ordering. And another interesting um, observation in the early report is that uh, when people perform um, performed a non hole transport for this material, they do find the intrinsic uh, anonymous hole effect, even though this material overall do not have a, a perfect magnetic ordering. And uh, according to their uh, report value, uh, I can evaluate the We lost you again. The chain number. Hello. Uh, sorry. I'm back. I'm yeah. back. Okay. Yeah, please go. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. So this encouraged me to um, just make one uh, brief speculation that whether uh, this charge or this special charge ordering can um, can can be an exotic topological order to have a energy gap with a chain number equals to one. So that's uh, the initial um, speculation. And then we look into the literature because uh, uh, these materials all have a uh, band feeling around the uh, around the Van Hoff singularity. And when we look into uh, the literature around 2012, uh, there do be uh, do, there do have some um, pioneering theoretical work. However, the, the theoretical work are not fully consistent with each other. Some predict spin density wave, some predict uh, charge density wave, and other predict more exotic time reversal symmetry breaking orders. So this um, further uh, encourages us to uh, use our technique to uh, determine what kind of uh, order is happening at the 80 Kelvin. So then we performed uh, scanning turning microscopy for this uh, potassium vanadium antimony material. For this material, just by looking at the uh, cle uh, by looking at the crystal structure, one immediately uh, realized that there are two allowed combinations. One is the potassium termination, and the other is the antimony termination because the antimony uh, atom and the vanadium atom are bonded so tight that we can unfortunately cannot obtain a Kakumi termination. But even uh, we don't have that, the, we can we usually believe that the uh, antimony lattice couples so strong to the Kakumi lattice. So, uh, the Kagome lattice physics can usually be revealed just by turning uh, into the antimony surface because uh, uh, D orbital usually dominate the uh, turning signal. D orbital is forming from the uh, vandimony orbital. So uh, this termination uh, analysis also allows to us to determine that once we find an uh, atomic step edge, then we can immediately determine the upper step edge would be the potassium surface and the lower step edge would be the antimony surface. So this is uh, successfully obtained by our imaging. And then when we look at the potassium and antimony surface, we immediately uh, find the, uh, there are clear uh, lattice modulations that is not from the prime uh, unicell. 
and through a Fourier transform, which better visualize such uh, super lattice to be a uh, two by two uh, super lattice based on the topographic imaging. And to further check whether uh, this two by two uh, is a surface reconstruction effect or a bulk phenomenon, we uh, elevated the temperature to above the charge ordering transition observed by transport and uh, susceptibility data. So once we raise the temperature above 80 Kelvin, we observe this uh, signal disappears. So this also uh, help us to confirm that uh, this two has a, can be a strong candidate uh, to be the charge ordering vector. And for a charge ordering um, phenomenon uh, like the Pierce uh, distortion or charge density wave, usually we expect to have an um, energy gap around the Fermi level. And we do observe uh, such um, a V-shaped energy gap. It actually has a, a, a shoulder near, um, near 10 or uh, 15 millivolts. And uh, again, above the uh, bulk measured transition temperature uh, and uh, 80 Kelvin, we find the signal disappears. And uh, uh, we also systematically raise our magnetic field along C-axis to find that this uh, energy gap is very robust against the magnetic field perturbations. To the, so to the first order, uh, this is a charge energy gap, not directly related to the spin. And uh, uh, we also collaborated with the first principle guys to find that once we're considering that as a calculus has a hexagonal, um, hexagonal and a trimer uh, reconstruction, then the energy of the system can be lowered to um, as large as 32 millivolts. So this is actually a, a very big value. So this means um, it do has a, a charge density wave instability to the first order. And uh, we also find and the different terminations that actually the, uh, this shoulder become more uh, evident. So there seem to be clearly two kinds of uh, um, order parameters for the uh, energy gap or Monty gap for the charge order phase. This is uh, later on uh, nicely demonstrated by recent uh, angle resolved for emission results. That is the, the demonstrate that this charge order gap is highly anisotropic. And uh, um, there are also uh, two kinds of dominant uh, sizes that is uh, consistent with the, our uh, STM data on the occupied side. One is around 10 millivolts and the other is around 20 millivolts. And for a charge or order uh, phenomenon, usually uh, for the classical uh, charge density wave, usually we expect when we um, cross the energy gap, there should be a charge reversal in the real space. So we do uh, find uh, candidates for the charge reversal phenomenon when we are uh, measuring the dense, the DIDV spectrum map and the negative 30 millivolts and positive 30 millivolts, we do find a clear reversal. For example, in this hexagonal, we marked it uh, behaves at, as red high intensity and then it behave as uh, low intensity. So there indeed has a charge reversal phenomenon tied to this um, charge order. And again, we uh, measure the energy uh, dependence of the vector, of the vector uh, value of this charge order. And we found that there uh, is actually a static order. And this is uh, distinguished from a band dispersion. So one um, feature that is very different from, from well-known uh, charge density wave material like, like niobium disenonide that we find is that uh, this material for different samples, we always observe a carol signal. The carol signal is determined by the fact that the three vectors along three different directions has different values. So for, for all the samples they have, uh, different intensities for the, uh, the three directions. And uh, we will also uh, not 
only for calcium vanadium uh, antimony we also checked for other two um, material kagumi superconductor material these cousin materials uh, these materials has additional stripe uh, seen on the surface what we think uh, this is probably a surface phenomenon and uh, regardless of this uh, surface superlattice or this one by four stripes we found is uh, three q vectors still has um, different intensity it, this is uh, uh, obtained for the pristine uh, area where there is no defects we always observe that the intensity for the three vectors are different so uh, based on the counting direction from lower to higher we can determine always determine um, the left hand or right hand characteristic for the material and because our uh, DIDV mapping can often involve the lattice signal so to purely um, distinguish from the lattice signal we also design experiment to measure uh, directly the energy gap modulation for this material in real space so this has been done uh, take um, several weeks to obtain this um, large counting data so for, for each spatial point we take a very high resolution uh, energy gap data so to determine from the peak to peak uh, distance we determine the uh, charge order energy gap size so we make a charge uh, gap for the uh, area and then through Fourier transform uh, we again observe the intensity or we observe this two by two charge order and their intensity are different again de uh, defining a uh, chirality because uh, this is purely from the energy modulation or energy size modulation of the charge gap so this is purely electronic origin so we think at least the chirality should have some electronic origin and uh, since it has a um, carrier uh, nature and uh, we will know that the magnetic field essentially is a, a vector is a is a vector unit so we can you we can try to use magnet field to manipulate this kind of charge order uh, the clarity of the charge order and we do find uh, the charge order clarity responses to our magnetic field uh, for uh, two tesla magnetic field we found when we apply two tesla magnetic field uh, along c axis we found a positive two tesla and a negative two two tesla has um, different clarity so it seems um, um, this couples to the magnetic field somehow has a similar flavor as a uh, um, anomalous hole effect that I will uh, later on discuss how this is probably connected to the anomalous hole phenomenon. So uh, this is obtained for one particular energy and we actually uh, did more systematic work to check many different energies and we uh, observe that um, it happens for many energies for the uh, exact uh, same position atomic position uh, where uh, there are fewer uh, impurities uh, for example the uh, zero millivolts we observe clockwise to anticlockwise and also 10 millivolts and 30 millivolts we observe the clockwise to anticlockwise uh, reversal by many field and uh, in real space we can also elaborate uh, how this clarity is defined uh, for any we can pick up any position in real space and if we make a circle we check the um we will we'll make a circle and check the intensity distribution of the charge we always find we also always find we can uh, define a clarity uh, the red is a higher intensity and then uh, we can we can find its uh, clarity is clockwise for the positive two tesla and then uh, with reverse the field then we find the clarity is got a reverse. So this is just a, a consistency check with the uh, um, Fourier transform uh, data in the momentum space. And we also uh, have looked at uh, materials with uh, one by four surface super lattice. For these materials, uh, for these two materials, again, for the pristine uh, area, we uh, observe the clarity uh, switch irrespective of the perturbation of the uh, one by four surface uh, super lattice. 
So this is a very robust phenomenon. Uh, however, all these um, enormous hole effect or our um, STM magnetic field perturbed spectroscopic imaging, they, they are both uh, charge sensitive probes. Because the uh, magnetic field, uh, there has uh, such um, observable or detectable magnetic field re response. This encourages us to further uh, check the uh, mu SR signals as a direct magnetic sensitive probe. So we first use, um, well, this is in collaboration with uh, Zurab Kukucha and uh, PSI. So we first use um, a zero uh, mu SR technique to find uh, that we do observe there um, additional terms that cannot uh, be described by the nuclear uh, response. So there, uh, when we do the fitting of the uh, mu, mu SR uh, data, we found that there, we do have to include uh, electronic contributions, uh, gamma, as a, a relaxation rate. So for, the, um, for this gamma, uh, from detector three, four, and detector one, two, uh, both detectors we observe um, a clear enhancement just below the, uh, across the um, chart order transition. So this is um, early, uh, this is, is for this technique, this is a um, indication of the indication for the uh, establish of spontaneous internal magnetic field. So internal magnetic field value is evaluated as uh, 0.3 Gauss. So this is a very small value. However, if we look at the other claimed, uh, previously claimed time reversal uh, symmetry breaking superconductors, they are actually on the same order of magnitude around 0 0.1, 0 0.2 or 0.57. They are of the same order. However, it's just this phenomenon happens at a much larger, uh, much higher temperature. These uh, time reversal symmetry breaking superconductors uh, always have a key, uh, this, uh, this signal emerge around one Kelvin. Well, this uh, kind of material has uh, uh, emerging temperature and uh, 70 or 80 Kelvin. Because um, we do not really use them, zero uh, field mu SRD do not really exclude completely the uh, the nuclear contribution. Then we also designed a high magnetic field um, mu SR uh, measurement. So this is allows because the nuclear uh, response uh, usually usually do not uh, is usually does not sensitive to external magnetic field, and we found the relaxation rates uh, is very sensitive to the uh, magnetic field, and we with eight Tesla field it can be substantially enhanced. So this encourages us uh, to say that, or to claim that uh, there do has um, time re reversal symmetry breaking uh, tied to this kind of uh, charge order. And uh, the charge order with uh, uh, both electronic and magnetic duality has actually been uh, discussed for, uh, for 40 years or even longer. We list some pioneering example with, uh, this is a uh, Haldane uh, model in uh, proposed initially for a uh, graphing, uh, uh, graphing lattice. And uh, uh, he proposed that uh, uh, the green thing lattice could uh, potentially have this kind of uh, loop like hoping. And um, this hoping spontaneous break time reversal symmetry and eventually can lead to a quantum norms Hall effect. And there are also well-known uh, one model proposed in Kubris try to explain the uh, the pseudo gap uh, physics that has been, has puzzled physics for decades, and uh, whether the um, Kagome uh, lattice could feature such kinds of wall loop currents is still a frontier question that we want to uh, further explore. And uh, in all these models, uh, even uh, the self consistently self-consistently calculated uh, loop currents, uh, like the MAMA model, they often consider uh, extended cooling interaction rather than on-site cooling interaction. So this um, make us to think whether uh, the extended cooling interaction could be very essential 
uh, to this uh, class of Kagome superconductors. So we, we do have some uh, phenomenological understanding uh, based on the first principles. So there are so many bands for this material and uh, most are from antimony PZ orbital, which are likely to be trivial. It has a Fermi uh, circular Fermi surface. And we think it probably uh, is a trivial one. And uh, a non-trivial one is um, uh, vandium, uh, vandium uh, orbitals. One of the vandium orbital is this, uh, um, D, uh, is this uh, DXY orbital, which is under the Van Hoff filling. So we think the uh, Van Hoff filling uh, uh, Fermi surface, Van Hoff filling uh, DXY orbital has a Fermi surface that is this uh, hexagonal like, and uh, clearly it has a, a nest, it satisfies a uh, nesting condition. So there could be um, nesting induced instabilities as a driver for this charge order. So I think that most of the um, recent uh, reports on this material. Uh, uh, more or less agree with this um, assignment that the vandium DXY orbital should be the driver of the instability, charge order instability for this kind of material. And uh, then there is another uh, interesting orbital from the DXZ, DYZ orbital. They are also centering around the endpoint. However, these orbitals actually form direct like band structure uh, in, in topological field, we call it a, a Dirac nodal lines. With spin orbital coupling, they are gapped Dirac uh, nodal lines or gapped Dirac loops. So one interesting feature will be how would this um, charge ordering induced by the DXY orbital to um, act on the topological bands. So that is the task we we'll try to solve in uh, our paper. So essentially, because uh, we want to uh, describe both our STM data and the MUSR data on the topological, uh, on the time reversal symmetry breaking nature. So we essentially consider an order parameter of three sets, uh, delta Q1, delta Q2, and delta Q3. They, they have different values uh, according to our STM data because uh, um, they have different peaks intensities, vector peak intensity. So they have a different value. These values are proportional to the experimentally observed um, peak intensity. And uh, more crucially, we consider they have uh, two, over, uh, two or three pi phase difference. This is to allow the model to break time reversal symmetry. So if the, their phase difference is not zero or pi, it spontaneously breaks the time reversal symmetry. So that is a key assumption in our phenomenological model. So this is not a self-consistent model, it's a phenomenological model. And with, with this key ingredients, we can take a realistic band structure to calculate how this order parameter will affect the topological band. So uh, when we do the calculation for the Kz equal to zero band, uh, the direct band, then we can realize that it opens um, uh, a chain energy gap with a uh, chain number actually equals to uh, four. And also these bands are simultaneously fold uh, to, um, because it's a two by two charge order, they are also fold uh, to the, uh, their desired positions. And uh, eventually when we have to consider the uh, full KZ band structure and perform the uh, similar calculation, to uh, find the anomalous hole effect to be uh, around 0.7 quantum hole. This is uh, actually has a pretty uh, good match with the experimentally observed value. And uh, we also calculate the uh, orbital magnetism. Even though there is no uh, spin polarization, the system somehow builds up uh, orbital magnetism of 0.1 uh, mu b. This is also close to the experimentally obtained value. So the orbital magnetism um, is a modern concept. It's actually similar to uh, the uh, orbital magnetism me measured recently in twisted bilayer graphene. So without using the spin, 
uh, orbitals can also uh, break time reversal symmetry and uh, introduce large anomalous Hall effect. And this orbital magnetic moment actually can couple to the external magnetic field. We think that is essential uh, to lead to the character switch uh, to our uh, STM experiment. And lastly, I would like to um, briefly talk about the uh, inter intertwined Kagome superconductivity. So with the experience of uh, uh, corporates and iron superconductors, I think the understanding of uh, uh, the interplay between charge order or other competing order with the superconductivity is uh, pretty mature now. Uh, so usually we, we can think that the charge order and the superconductivity are both friend and foe. To say they are friends means uh, they, they can potentially be introduced by same type of interactions. So their um, gap structure can often have, uh, have many similarities. And to say they, they, are, for, uh, they are false because um, they have to compete for the same density of states. So, <laughs> They, they can often exhibit competing um, competing physics when we, especially for this kind of material, when we, uh, it's more clear when we add pressure, the charge density wave uh, ordering temperature get a systematically suppressed and the superconductivity temperature get enhanced. So that is a clear example for the competition. But, but these are, can be discussed in any superconductor materials. Um, so we, would like more to ask what would be the uh, new questions for this kind of material. Unfortunately for STM, the TC of this material is just uh, a little bit too low for our capability. Uh, for example, uh, I listed one uh, data from USTC where they actually has the lowest um, scanning turning microscopic data uh, and 40 millikelvin, and even that, they find the gap, superconducting gap does not touch to zero. So this leaves an open question whether uh, this is a full gap system or what is the gap symmetry could be, is, is still unclear whether this state is related to time reversal symmetry breaking or other symmetry breaking is still an open question. And one interesting um, result from our um, collaboration is uh, for the MUSR site, we, we do have some uh, indication that uh, connects uh, the superconductivity, connect the superconductivity physics to the charge order physics. Because as said, the charge order, if we uh, propose it as a, it, it propose as a duality to have the, uh, both time reversal symmetry breaking and the electronic feature, then it usually requires the system to have extended cooling actions. And for the superending state, we do find uh, the potassium uh, vanadium antimony has a very low superfluid density. And the scaling with the superconductivity transition is very close to the electron doped cuprates, which is a well-known example that has poorly screened cooling interactions. So this builds up a, a connection that this can has similar driven force from the extended cooling interactions. So look forward, uh, within one direction for us is try to uh, find a higher temperature Kagome superconductor materials. One lesson from iron superconductivity to me is that the potassium ion arsenic actually has a very low TC to three Kelvin, while the doped system like a uh, barium doped has a TC of, of uh, nearly 40 Kelvin and even uh, replace the arsenic with selenide also promotes its TC to uh, around uh, 30 Kelvin. So this encourages us to further do some chemical engineering uh, for the um, Kagome system. And we, uh, another route is to look for some old Kagome superconductor materials. And we do find some, um, a 40 year old Kagome superconductor. Uh, then we did some uh, first principle calculation. This is a a TC over 10 Kelvin Kagome superconductor. And we, when we do the first principle calculation, we again find uh, there is um, one hop singularity uh, happening 
uh, at the Fermi level. So this encourages us to uh, to set claim that uh, probably this uh, Kagami superconductors all fall to the same scheme. And what would be the factor that enhance its TC to over 10 Kelvin is also a, 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 a ex excellent question to ask. And uh, uh, lastly, I think uh, one of the new questions for uh, Kagome superconductivity through my research experience is whether we can combine some of these uh, Kagome magnet and uh, uh, if they become Kagome superconductors, what would they behave? And again, I have one example. We found another 40 year old Kagome superconductor with uh, 5 Kelvin TC. And uh, very surprisingly, this material above TC's normal state is a magnet. Uh, we can clearly observe the uh, a magnetic loop from the magnetization data. So uh, it's clearly in the normal state is a magnet break time reversal symmetry with a, a sizable magnetic moment. So what would the uh, superconductivity behave? That is also very interesting to explore. And on theoretical side, I found one uh, interesting uh, direction is uh, to look for the uh, charge 4E superconductor that uh, is proposed by Patrick Lee and Xiao Gang Wen around 2009. They also uh, propose some kind of, uh, if we drop some of these, um, some of these spin one half Kagome um, spin liquid candidates, we can also reveal uh, exotic uh, time reversal symmetry Kagome superconductors. These are also uh, interesting direction to pursue. Uh, finally, I want to uh, acknowledge my collaborators, including my advisor and uh, uh, many of the sample uh, providers. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Very nice talk. Yeah. Okay. So, so uh, yeah, I guess this talk is uh, open open for question. Any anybody, you can raise your hand or, or type in the chat or or just you know open your mic and speak. I have just a word. Hey, hey. hi. Uh, I, I would like to. Uh, how sure are you that the the magnetic and superconducting phase are the same phase? In some sense, how sure are you that it's not a, a two-phase system that you have when you have a superconductor and a magnet at the same time? Yeah, I think I think that uh, that is a, a question we want to explore. Well, I, I currently, we don't have in the supernatural state. Well, we our STM has limited data because um, um, known superconductors has very low TC. That that is the direction we plan to pursue. Whether, for example, whether the um, if the parent state is a magnet, so entering into to the supernatural state, uh, what uh, would be the supernatural state? behave like, whether it, it could have spontaneous vortices or other um, unknown phenomenon. I think this question is the, 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 the topic that I, we want to pursue to study that it has not been addressed by any study. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Hans, you have a question? Hans, honey? Uh, yes, thank you. Very nice talk. So my question is, you mentioned that this uh, charge uh, density wave and superconductivity compete for the same electrons. So if there is charge order at 80 Kelvin and then superconductivity at you know, 1 Kelvin or 2.5 Kelvin, so do you see a reduction of the relaxation rate of the muon relaxation rate, which means that you take electrons from the yeah, kind of uh, time reversal symmetry breaking order into the superconducting state? Yeah, that, that is a good question. Um, actually, when we measure the mu SR relaxation rate uh, in this panel uh, across the TC, we don't see a, a reduction. So we think the time reversal symmetry breaking persists into the supernatural state. They mm -hmm. coexist. Yeah. Thank you. That is, uh, um, we, we don't have other probes now. We don't have uh, some new SR data. Okay, uh, uh, Ming? Uh, yes, just, uh, very nice talk. Thank you very much. I just wanted to ask regarding the charge density waves in the 135 system. Mm -hmm. um, could you comment on uh, one is the 
how uh, ubiquitous is the what you call the surface uh, one unidirectional charge density wave? And the second question is, um, could you also comment on the uh, Ilias results from BC that they don't see a response to the field? Um, what is what is your what do you yeah uh, um, for for the um, for the two by th there is a um, one by four charge order in observed not in potassium but in CS and the other material and the CS are the, and the RB material and uh, we we tend to think these are surface phenomena. Uh, one reason is when we um we study this material, we also find various of the small domains. Uh, so I tend to think that uh, this is small domains are uh, uh, around 10 nanometer uh, size. They are not energy favorable uh, in bulk. <laughs> Your bulk is because the domains are energy costing. So then I consulted the DFT guys. They did um, calculations uh, and found uh, two D independent DFT group both find that the, there is uh, um, there can be explained by surface reconstruction. Because in iron supernatural, when we study there, can be uh, easily can have surface uh, reconstruction stripes one one by two or others. So one by four is not a surprise uh, to be a, a surface phenomenon. However, I, I agree with uh, um, many other STM guys that STM alone cannot test cannot self distinguish whether we are surface or not. But uh, uh, we we do uh, have uh, some. Um, High resolution. Uh, this is in collaboration with Hu uh, Miao. He do have some high high, high resolution X ray data. Mm -hmm. uh, this is to be posted uh, this week. So for high resolution X ray data down to ten Kelvin, this is well in the uh, one by four. We, we sometimes see the one by four ordering in STM data is even higher intensity than the two by two. However, if we check the X ray data, there is no such signal of one by four. So. so, so so we don't think it's a bulk phenomenon. Do you always see it though? Uh, I just yeah, wonder. yeah, yeah. I, I will always see it in the CS compound and the RB compound. Uh, yeah, we, we open, but some of the STM group reports, they don't see it uh, in the CS for some of the regions. So th this is also, and it's actually is only, only for the SB surface. So this also casts doubts. It's not for the CS surface or um, RB surface. Only for the antimony surface. So antimony surface like the arsenic, this the, the ion superconductors, they can easily have one by two uh, charge uh, reconstruction. And for your question, uh, some people do not observe the chirality switch. Actually, we, we also repeat uh, such kind of experiment when we measure and the position where we found there are uh, many defects. We also do not observe. For example, this is in. Uh, we call the defects pinning. It's also in our nature uh, nature material paper. We we found when we have many defects, this defect somehow has a ring like standing wave signal, very close to the two by two order. We we think probably this uh, affecting uh, the chirality, and uh, we neither observe chirality or uh, many field switch effect, similar to other reports for this defect region, and also uh, for the for the uh, for the samples with stripes. Or well, when we have defects, uh, you can see there is no, uh, there is no uh, chirality. Mm -hmm. And we also don't have, so, so the defects issue is also puzzles us a lot. We, we don't have a clear answer to that yet. So this is uh, again, uh, the defects region. We have uh, a lot of standing waves and then we don't observe either chirality or, uh, or many few response. <laughs> and, and all our data is uh, because we, we study some of these Kagome magnets. So we more like to, in our experience, we more like to be away from these defects. So, so that's why we, we mainly present the defects free region. But it, it's Thank indeed a question. Okay. Yeah, I, we don't understand why the defects pin this. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Dan, you have a question? You, you're muted, Dan. <laughs> yes, um, thanks so much. Really beautiful. Um, I, I had a question about um, your gap maps you used the, along the three vectors showing the chirality. Um, yeah. Uh, maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah right there. Mm -hmm. So 
you show these black points with a peak, but um, it looks like there's maybe another energy scale below that. Yeah, yeah. So maybe well, you can comment on, you know, what's this lower versus higher energy scale and you chose the higher one here. Yeah, um, in, in, in many of our data, we have a lower shoulder, right? It's just that the higher, higher, um, higher energy part is more dramatic. So that's easier to determine the gap size. So that's why we mainly use a higher, higher energy one. So that's uh, the primary reason. The, the lower one is hard to determine its energy because a, a higher one, you can say, okay, it's a peak. We just pick up the peak value. The, the shorter one, we don't know how to extract the accurately, uh, where is the energy. Okay. It, it does okay. seem like the lower energy one is maybe more isotropic. Probably, yeah. It's just hard for us to determine its energy, precisely energy to, to make a gap map. But, but we, we think we, we should try. We should try it to see to have some probably third derivative. To, yeah. To have some uh, extraction. Okay, that'd be great. Okay, the second question actually I was really intrigued that at the end you talked about these higher temperature superconductor materials. You, are, I guess you're not yet can you tell us what materials those are that will come yeah, later? Yeah, because these uh, collaborators <laughs> don't allow me to reveal <laughs> their, their secrets. Okay. Uh, but but you can, I, I list some reference in the beginning. There, there are many uh, of these, uh, over 20 material uh, discovered. But uh, I have to say, um, Stephen Wilson's material is, uh, is more 2D. These, these are most uh, 3D. Um, Stream Wilson's material has a uh, resistivity. The 2D is claimed by the resistivity anisotropy, I believe. The resistivity in plane and out plane is uh, dramatically different. But if you look at their band structure, the, the Van Hoff singularity also have a 300 millivolts uh, difference along KZ. So electronically, it's, it's not that KZ 2D uh, to, to me, at least for the Van Hoff singularity. So, um, um, it's still, I think it's, uh, this is uh, uh, compared with others is the most 2D material. But we can say others uh, contains cacomylitis. It's just not that 2D, yeah. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, so, so Yu Zhen. Uh, may I ask uh, one uh, pretty simple question? Uh, all, the, uh, all the time reversal broken feature you observed over here, uh, is this mostly from the spontaneous symmetry breakpoint or uh, broken induced by the charge order, or you think it's mostly from uh, when you apply a magnetic field is a field induced time reversal uh, symmetry broken? Yeah, that's uh, um, we 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 still uh, don't understand this well. I think this is a very good question. Um, from the new SR data, it is uh, seems to. I don't know whether a new SR expert agrees or not. Uh, and this in our paper is written that uh, uh, there is a spontaneous uh, magnetic field breaks uh, time reversal symmetry and the spontaneous uh, magnetic field uh, is uh, similar to other claimed time reversal symmetry broken superconductors. So there is a, clearly a spontaneous uh, part for the physics. And there is additionally, the field probably promotes uh, this phenomenon. That is uh, uh, also revealed by the mu SR is uh, when we apply field, it's somehow the reaction rates uh, enhances a lot. So there is uh, uh, like uh, in in the in the twisted bilayer graphene. If we not, if we learn their papers, they also use uh, uh, call, they call it a field training. So I think the field is to align the domains to make the effect more dramatic for the macroscopic measurement. Um, so I think the field is useful uh, to compete the domains where uh, the strings or defects in the material. And the field, uh, external field is uh, uh, clearly helpful to make the temporal symmetry breaking nature more evident. Okay, I see. But because if you go back to the previously anonymous Hall effect data. Yeah, that is also, um, not, there is no uh, loop, right? It's um, yeah, because for um, for like, for example, for well semi-metal stuff like that, um, especially for magnetic well semi-metal, if you select domains to have spontaneous anomalous Hall effect, uh, 
the hysteresis of, of this uh, whole resistivity should be a uh, step like mostly, but here you, it, it responds pretty softly. So yeah, I think this is understandable. There, there are many um, magnets called a soft magnet. If you search the keyword soft magnet in Google, it will be um, a zero um, heteresis. There is no, but it's still called a magnet, right? It's just called a soft magnet. But that's uh, I, what I'm talking about. Is it's really somehow indicates that it looks like the anonymous hall is not uh, intrinsic. It it looks like uh, you have to because if it is intrinsic, it should be uh, pretty sharp, uh, sharp, and you have a spontaneous. Uh, how effect at uh, zero field. I, I think that in the anonymous flow connectivity, uh, the definition of intrinsic and extrinsic um, I, uh, will be different from the way you define. The extrinsic and extrinsic uh, is uh, through the scaling analysis. Uh, when you, it, you, what you discussed is uh, a nature, a magnetic nature, whether this is a soft magnet or hard magnet. Hard magnet will develop a well-defined loop, right? A soft magnet do not have this loop, then it's not not at all will just be like this, like the ion T material. It is a soft magnet, so it's a, um, it's a, a magnetic anonymous hole effect. If we check the literature, you will be similar to this material. Okay, uh, but, but again, I agree with you. Um, this is even uh, they has to subtract uh, a, a normal hole effect to obtain this uh, kind of nicer curves. So uh, this is also cast out uh, in the anonymous hole data. So uh, we'll wait for further um, engineering down to the atomic layers to see more clearly whether um, there should be certain chain number physics or okay. quantization that, that will be more helpful or conclusive. I see, thank you. Okay, so there are also two more questions on the chat. So the first question is, I guess, uh, by like, uh, is the chiral property of the STM intensity also feature of implant field. Basically, do you also see chiral properties with implant field? Yeah, we try to uh, perturb the um, material with the implant magnetic field, but we don't see uh, much uh, change. Okay. I guess the other question is uh, in, in Kagumi Magnum uh, by, by Han, yeah, in Kagumi Magnum models, do you know of any materials in which the black band on the top become gap two? Um, this, yeah, yeah uh, the uh, we, 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 most of our technique are sensitive to recharge. I think uh, mm -hmm. by the dice functions of that yeah, but technique sure is more sensitive to the magnet. On top becomes, I'm not sure I understand that question. Um, I, I, yeah, for, for the electronic structure, uh, for example, uh, our claim the cobaltin sulfur, we claim the we spin optical coupling. Uh, here, there will also open a gap. Mm -hmm. So this is also a Z2 uh, gap when, when, uh, without magnetism. With the magnetism, there, there will, this will also be a chain energy gap. And I think people are still trying to realize the, uh, this uh, gap because uh, this, is, uh, this gap and uh, along with the flat band is a good candidate for the fractional quantum anonymous Hall effect. Mm -hmm. But this yeah, is but a is, tattoo, right? This is, I mean, the real band structure is more complicated than this. Yes, correct. Yeah, so, most so the, the most. flat band, it's not entirely obvious. I mean, I, I think there is a topological non-trivial band um, going across the Fermi energy according to DFT. Uh, some of, for example, uh, this DFT I showed, it has a very uh, flat band. Um, this is a material. No, but yeah, that's a very DFT. interesting material. But I think for the 135, uh, it, it's not it, exactly it's just, um, it's just very high energy. It's uh, around one electron volts, over one electron volts above the frame level. Mm -hmm. So so that's most people don't show it. But the short answer is that I think that there is uh, a band that goes across the Fermi energy that's topologically non-trivial, that, that the true number is not zero. Yeah. So, so one could ask uh, how that band responds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that will be uh, interesting. And people are proposing this to realize a quantum, a fractional quantum loss for impact. I think uh, that is, is also one of the major pursuits in this research area. 
Okay, I mean, so, so yeah, okay, but yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, so I uh, really appreciate that you're, you're giving this a uh, very nice talk. Yeah, that yeah, was nice. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Okay, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, so this will be posted on, on, on YouTube. Yeah, tomorrow. yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for, for thank coming. Thank you very much. So, so we'll, we'll, have, we'll have another one next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. All right.